Hey everybody, Brandon Swanson along with Ricky Widmer, <sighs> and Ricky is so happy to be here. Why, you may ask, and if you're asking where you been, because the Chicago Cubs are going to the World Series for the first time since 1945. They have not won a World Series since 1908. They will be taking on the Cleveland Indians, and Ricky, you couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier and I mean the big thing that everyone asked me when I went to work the next day was oh did, did you cry did you cry and no I didn't cry we didn't win it yet if we win it there's gonna be fucking waterworks coming out of these bad boys but it's just it's surreal it is so surreal for me I mean watching this team ever since I was what like seven when I went to Wrigley for the first time, and now actually, and you know what's the most surreal thing? Seeing the World Series on Wrigley Field, on the like them painting it on the infield lines, and I can't wait for it. Cannot wait for this series to start later today as this video posts. In Cleveland, they also have been in quite a drought for some time as well. They have not won it since 1948, so. They and the Cubs know how it feels to have a nice long drought Somebody of championships. Ending. Somebody's streak is ending, Brandon. Yes, it is, and we're going to get right into it. This is going to be a good series, and I think that it's a series of two teams that have been absolutely phenomenal. I think that the Cleveland mm-hmm. Indians, and, I, and I've said it really along the way with Cleveland, is that they're, they're a team made up of, you know, I don't want to say nobodies, but they're a team made up of guys who aren't getting paid the most, of guys that aren't always in the spotlight, but guess what? They get the big hit in the big moment, and that's what they've been doing all season long. When you pair that with outstanding pitching, and after the trade deadline, a bullpen that was phenomenal. I don't want to say that they mirror the Cubs, but they're similar teams in the sense of they have a good rotation they've got a really good lockdown bullpen for the most part and they're hitting when it's on it's good well and the one thing you got you forgot about is they also have two great managers in joe man absolutely tito francona and uh for me how i see this i from the cub side the starting pitching like as i was kind of walking through okay pitching bullpen starters i think the cubs got the advantage in this one because we have to me the best four rotations besides like maybe Kershaw or Mad Bum. Oh wait, we beat both those guys on the way here. So I think we know what we're doing. But Lester game one, co MVP for the NLCS. Then I mean you get Arietta in game two. Then oh wait, Hendricks, the future Cy Young, get him in game three, then Lackey game four. It's not a it's not a starters where I'm thinking we're sweeping it, but these are starters to where Lester's been lights out, Hendricks has been lights out. Those could be two wins. If Arietta could just get some good defense behind him, which he can because this team is, to me, the best defensive team in the MLB. The way Joe Madden runs this team defensively, the big question for the Cubs is, are the bats going to come alive? If the bats come alive like they did after we went down 2-1 to the Dodgers, no problem in this one. Cubs will be walking away with the hardware. We just got to get those bats going. And and I, and I don't I don't and I am rooting I will say I'm rooting for the Cubs. Mm-hmm. I'll come around and say it, you know, a White Sox fan, but I am rooting for the Chicago Cubs, but you know, you got to take a look at you're going up against Corey Kluber, Trevor Bauer, you know, and, and, and game one, game two, respectively. I mean, th- and those are both in Cleveland. Those are two really good pitchers mm-hmm. right there. And is there? do you think there's really anything there um, when people say, you know, the American League versus the, the National League? And, and, and does that have anything to do with it? Because Corey Kluber was able to shut down the Jays' bats. And that's that, that was something because the, the Blue Jays love them or hate them. They're explosive, and any single one of those guys in that lineup can hit a home run, and they they really kept them down to the Indians starting pitching. And Kluber's the only one. Game one scares the ever-living shit out of me because I am thinking going in, I'm expecting like what we saw when it was Lester Cueto. That's what I'm thinking. 0-0 game going into the eighth with a Kyle Schwarr daddy bomb in the eighth, the DH coming back. 
putting us up one nothing Cubs with the win. That's an ideal world how that would happen. Kind of eerily similar to Javi Baez and his coming out party, how he put us up in that one. Kluber's the only one in game one and two. Like Bauer's a good good starter, but he doesn't scare me. Kluber's a guy that I think when he's on can go toe to toe with Lester, but I'm hoping Lester can get to the bats and kind of stay as hot as he is. The big thing for the Indians, though, that I think could be an Achilles heel for the Cubs, especially whenever Lester's on the mound, let's see how they use their speed. How do they use their speed on the base base path? Do they run a little bit? And do they run with so much success that maybe it forces Joe Madden to uh, play Wilson Contreras or David Ross, the better catching arms from behind the plate in this series. The Cleveland Indians have shown to be a, a really good, smart team, especially mm-hmm. on the base paths. It all starts with the when, manager. When, 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 when you see uh, guys like Mike Napoli being able to go and, and steal a base, it's, it's not because he's fast necessarily it's because he's, he's heads up base be, heads up base running and, and and I think that that's what Cl- the Cleveland Indians have they just have heads up a lot of things and they they do have guys in that lineup that can mm-hmm. hit Jason Kipnis can hit Francisco Lindor can hit Naquin can hit Napoli can hit do any of those guys worry you where you think oh you know I they're they're it doesn't matter who we put out there they, they could hit them I'm not really worried about I don't think this Indian lineup to me is just going to come out and dominate the pitching. The thing I am worried about is what the Indians have done is they haven't really dominated pitchers, but they've got the timely hits. They've got the hits that they needed to get in the big, the big moments to push them on to victories after they get on base. Then I'm a little worried with if they could steal some bases. I love how you brought up Mike Napoli because it's something with him where he comes to this team learns how to run the bases a little bit better, and then kind of brings that over to the rest of the guys on this team. And they're a good team on the base paths. They get timely hits. And to me, it's just, it's I'm confident in our starting pitching. The one question for the Cubs, though, that I think needs to be answered is, what do you do with Jason Hayward in this series? What do you do? Because he ha- he's been a liability at the plate. His offense has been bad. He wasn't that great during the regular season. He's been abysmal in the playoffs. However, he is a guy you do want out in the field, especially right field, because he's one of the best defensive outfielders that we have on this team. So it'll be interesting to see what Joe Madden does with Hayward. Does he put Wilson Contreras out in the outfield? Does he play Almora Jr. like he did in the last game where we clinched against the Dodgers? So... That's really the big question mark to me is how do you use Jason Hayward? I'm confident that this Cub lineup can get going. I think that our starting pitching and our defense will carry it to where we don't have to dominate their pitching. We just have to do exactly what the Indians do, get to timely hits. And we got to get to the starters early because the bullpen is the biggest strength for this Indians uh, whole pitching staff. Ricky, a final question for you. Kyle Schwarber. Uh, he is traveling to Cleveland. Uh, his status uh, is unknown uh, for the first game, but uh, if they're able to use him, do you think that they should, or because he has had a whole year where he has not played, not seen any action, really, um, do, you, do you think you just keep him out and, and not throw the young kid into a huge spot like this when you've been going with a really good core group of guys and Schwarber will get back into that core group of guys next year, but do you think it's even worth to worth it to chance it now? It's worth it. And the big thing is what he's going to bring to this team just offensively because I would play him as just a DH especially duh, when we're in Cleveland because that's where the DH is. He becomes a pinch hitter basically when we come back to Chicago. I throw him in there game one as the DH because this is a kid, yeah, you say the young kid, but this is somebody who is not like a Javi Baez, isn't like a Wilson Contreras or an Almora Jr., which especially Almora Jr. and Contreras, this is their first time in the postseason. 
Schwarber's been there once with us. He's come up in big moments last year, especially that baseball that we had uh, encased on top of the scoreboard last year. This is a kid that can get hot, and he has so much power from the plate. I think game one, you got to throw him out there as the DH just because of what he can do on the plate. The big thing is then when he if he gets on, will he be able to be a will he be a liability basically on the base paths? That's the one thing we're gonna have to figure out. If he is, then maybe I switch it and put Wilson Contreras as the DH. All right, Ricky, we've done a lot of talking back and forth. Cubs Indians World Series. It is going to be a good one. Two very good teams. Two. I I think that this has really this season has has really taken the best team in the National League mm-hmm. and the best team in the American League. I mean, as as much as some people may not want to say that Cleveland has been the best team in the American League, they certainly have. They built a very nice ball club with a very good manager. What is it that's going to happen in this series? What are we looking at? How long is this series going? What is your prediction? I'm going to be biased here, and Cleveland fans are not going to like it. I'm going to say Cubs in five. Cubs in five. I think how it's going to go out is Cubs will Cubs will win the Leicester game and lose the Arietta game. It might switch. We might lose game one, win game two. We'll split in Cleveland. That's the bottom line. Hendricks will get us the W in game three, Lackey game four, and then we will clinch in Chicago on Sunday. Lester bringing it home for us with a roll this Chapman with the save. I say Cubs in six, and uh, I don't actually think that this is going to happen, but I think that uh, uh, the Cubs will, I'm going to say that the Cubs will lose the first two in Cleveland. Everyone will be down on their luck. Oh, woe is us. And boom, they'll come roaring back with the next four. Don't say that, Brandon. I just thought I'd say it. Oh, I just oh. thought I'd say it. I don't actually think that it's going to happen like that, but why not just say it, right? Oh, don't, don't, don't wish that on me. Ricky says Cubs <sighs> in five. I say Cubs in six. This don't, is going to be a fun World Series. The Chicago Cubs and the Cleveland Indians. And it's going to be starting out in Cleveland. And Ricky is hoping... That it's going to be ending in Chicago. I hope. I hope so. I hope so. It's going to be a fun week of baseball. Make sure you're watching. It's on Fox with Joe Buck and John Smoltz. Did you hear that petition, by the way? No. Cub fans want uh, Joe Buck to be uh, removed from the broadcast. Why is that? I don't know. They don't like him. Why? Oh, don't ask me. I don't. I don't really care for the guy. It, it but doesn't it's make not it, like, it doesn't make any sense. Joe Buck actually, I feel has has been a rooting for the Chicago Cubs. Anywho, don't ask me. I like John Smoltz. Anywho, make sure you're watching baseball this week, folks, and make sure you comment down below on this video. Let us know what you think. Let us know your thoughts for this series. It's gonna be a good one. Cleveland Indians. And the Chicago Cubs, two very good teams with a lot of talent on both sides. Two teams evenly matched, I think, in a lot of positions. It's going to be close. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. And it's going to be some good baseball. Make sure you are watching. Make sure you like this video. Subscribe to MVP. And, of course, check out our Patreon page. Thanks so much for watching. For Ricky Winman, Brand Swanson saying so long, everybody. And go Cubs, go. Go Cubs, go. Go Cubs, go.